Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at how you can calculate the distance you'll be able to see a target. Now that's one of those things where people are like, wait, what? That's actually something you need to be thinking about. And believe it or not, it can be from time to time. Uh, one of the things that uh, commonly happens is you'll be doing visual reconnaissance as opposed to radar reconnaissance, especially if you're doing like a Vietnam scenario or something like that. And you're standing there going, well, um, what is the acceptable altitude I could put my airplane at so that it doesn't get shot down, but it can still spark the target? So we're going to go ahead and take a look at that today. So let's see what we've got going on. Let me go ahead and close my little screen here. We have a pair of commercial vessels. Uh, they're pretty big vessels. As a matter of fact, uh, when you click on one of these, if you were to go up to its database page up at the tippy top, what you can do is actually scroll all the way down here. And what you will see is you will see how far away you can visually spot a target. So for example, we have a visual detection range and it's of 12.97 nautical miles from the front. And it's gonna be about 22 nautical miles from the side. Keep in mind if it's dark or it's rainy or cloudy or something like that, obviously that value is gonna be significantly different. So what we do is um, we now have ourselves a handy dandy Harrier GR1. Now the reason I picked the GR1 is because it has a really, really cool little pod on board. Let me go ahead and open that up real fast. Grab our Harrier, scroll down to the dippy bottom here, and right there, it's called the T-I-A-L-D. Now what this pod has is a bunch of really cool little uh, thermal cameras as well as traditional TV cameras in there. You'll notice that if I have this one TV camera up at the tip top, and the thermal camera is also obviously going to be relevant here, if I pop that button, you're going to notice a couple different things here. And the first thing you're going to see is it has a minimum range of zero and it has a maximum range of 30 nautical miles. The other thing you're going to see if we scroll all the way over here, and this is the important part, is we have the ability to visual zoom detection and classification eight. What does eight mean? Eight means that it has the ability to detect things at a distance eight times greater than that of a 1x detection device. You'll also notice over on this side you have a scan engine of 10, which means you get one look around you every 10 seconds, which in my opinion, that's pretty impressive. So let's go ahead and pause for a second here. Let's go open up this one and we'll go ahead and drag a little line here. Now you'll notice we are beyond the maximum range of that particular sensor here. We have to get within 30 nautical miles to actually see anything with it. We also know that of course, since we're a little bit too far away, that we're not actually, even with our incredible amount of zoom, able to actually see that target. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab myself a slightly different aircraft real fast. And O2 is actually exactly what I wanted here. I'm going to go ahead and grab one of these. I'll do forward observer. I like that. Click on this guy. We're going to see and take a look. And you'll see it's a very, very similar situation. We actually have two devices here. We have the Mark 1 eyeball, and we also have generic binoculars here. Now this is all very, very useful to us because it tells us a lot of what we need. We have a fun little situation where our Mark 1 eyeball actually has a better detection distance than our binoculars actually do. But on the flip side, once we've identified a target, we have a much better identification radius. Although again, like I said, you're going to see a bit of a twist here in a second. If I go to these generic binoculars, you're going to notice that not only is it an 18 mile range, but we have a 4x detection distance for this particular aircraft. So let me go ahead and click on these guys again and see if we can work out what that works out to be here. So we're looking at this guy from the side right now, ish, it's again, ish. And if we take a look down here, let's see here, active visual detection range from the side should be 22.04 nautical miles, which is going to be a little in excess of my binocular range. But remember, identification distance for classification is about half of that. Now, if I take this number, 13.36, and I multiply it by the zoom there, that gets me a 53 nautical mile classification distance. But remember, we still have that 18 mile distance here. So if I go ahead and uh, unpause real quickly here, I'm just going to kind of aim, you'll notice he instantaneously I, um, spotted, did not identify, spotted this particular guy with both the binoculars as well as our little handy dandy um, eyeballs here. I'm actually going to pull him out of the way here just a teeny tiny bit. Notice even at this distance, which is about, uh, what do we about 20.6, we are able to easily see them with the eyeball and to a lesser extent the um, that particular one. Notice our range is not perfect, but now notice we're starting to be able to identify and actually start to classify because we're now physically close enough where we're in that um, kind of sweet spot as far as it. One thing you notice here though, see how everything here is eyeball as opposed to the binoculars. Because like I was saying a minute ago, if I click back on this guy and pop this one open, you can see that this little forward observer thing, let's go grab our little binoculars real fast. Ba, 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 ba. There it is, binoculars. Again, it's got that limitation there, whereas the eyeball does not have as much of a limitation. So what I'll do is I'll actually move us a little bit closer here. So that's about 18 nautical miles. That's what we wanted. Let's go ahead and move this guy to about this distance. Let's see here. What do we have now? We have 14.5 uh, nautical miles. 
So now I'm going to go ahead and click on him. We're now within range of the binoculars. And did you notice? instantaneously we were able to identify this target because our identification distance was about 50 nautical miles. Even though the eyeball can see farther, it doesn't mean it can identify better. That 4x zoom kicked in and enabled us to be able to see that immediately and actually classify it with both sensing systems. So in this case, it's pretty straightforward because again, we're traveling it. Wow, that's a really high altitude for this thing. Holy smokes. Um, you can see we're able to see it from that particular distance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I drop this guy out real quick. Um, our Harrier is uh, well on its way now. It's uh, kind of cruising along. Remember, the Harrier has a very, very significantly longer and much, much more powerful zoom here. You know, when I scroll down, you can see that. Uh, let's see here. I scroll down. Well, we have this limitation, I believe. Which one is this? The TV camera has a 30. So it's actually very, very similar in this sense. So let me go ahead and switch this on real quick. We want to see what we got. So 30 nautical miles is going to be about right actually we're just about in range there i'm going to swing them over here to this side so one of the things you have to remember too and uh, this is the part that makes it tricky is that the fact is is that you have a slant distance problem you know at these particular altitudes you're not looking um, at the side of the target you're actually looking at an oblique angle to the target now the way to kind of think about that is if i have my ship yes this is my ship deal and i have my little airplane up here again this is my airplane deal when i'm looking at this i'm actually looking at the side of the ship you know you want to imagine uh, kind of like a cube like this so kind of, this is my terrible little orthographic drawing here there we go this is what we're seeing here we're not looking at a flat as if we're looking at the top or the direct side of the ship now when you do that that's going to of course cause other issues as far as that limitation goes so as we're starting to get closer and closer and closer if we have nothing to cue our sensor the fact that there's something there we're not going to be able to see it until we get a lot closer so now if I click on this, you'll notice about 22.3 nautical miles away, we were able to pick up and identify the target. You'll also notice almost at the same time the eyeball grabbed it. So let's go ahead and pause real quick and unpack what we have here. So we're about 22.5 nautical miles away. Uh, if I click on this one, by the way, one cool trick you can do is if you click here, you can actually see exactly information about it and kind of how it was spotted and everything along those lines. So it does make it a little bit easier. You can actually click here and it'll highlight it for you. So you can see exactly who picked it up and how they picked it up, kind of a thing like that. So we notice we're far enough away. And even though we are, because we're within that one distance, we're able to actually start to um, identify that target, which is uh, definitely desirable. So let's get ourselves a little a tiny bit closer here and you'll notice we picked up the second target let me pause now notice this target is now a very very confident um, like oh, we can engage this target if we had to kind of thing and you'll notice look at the distance 15 nautical miles away now, you're probably saying, I thought I saw that number 15 a little while ago. Wasn't that something that we saw? Yeah, we did see that number 15 nautical miles a little while ago. So let's go ahead and open up that pod real fast. And you'll notice, ha ha, there's your 15 nautical miles. That's that critical distance where we're able to get enough information about the target to actually engage it. So now this chap right here is a little bit further away. We just picked them up. They're a much, 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 much smaller vessel here. So um, we can have them about 17.5, 15 nautical miles would be about right there. So let's go ahead and just put a mark. And I'm going to go order my Harrier to go ahead and take a right here. Now watch what happens when we cross that magical threshold here. See how we're not confident, we're not confident, and yeah, I'm working the best I can, and whoosh, just like that. We now have a very, very confident and engageable target that is being identified by this aircraft. Now, some of you are probably saying, well, what happens if you set it up so that, you know, you have somebody who has a radar, and then the eyeball is directed by the radar? Well, you're going to find yourself looking at something like this. Our Hawkeye over there in the distance was able to kind of cue this guy right here. So now uh, we're a little far away still, and the Hawkeye is doing a pretty solid job as far as identifying roughly where in the ocean these chaps are. But um, we're waiting for this guy right here to get close enough. Now, if we're actually to click on this one, uh, you're going to notice that even though we're within that 30 nautical mile range, I believe, let me check that real fast before I make a liar out of us. That's 33. We're getting a little closer. How about this guy? That's 30, so any second now. You'll notice that even though we know where the target are, we don't have that visual ID on them, and of course we do not have that classification on them because we're still a little bit too far away. So even though our zoom is fantastic, we're just not able to get close enough at this point to actually make it. There we go, let me go ahead and pause. Now notice, now this is critical, that we were able to get a solid identification on this target from a much, much, much longer range. And the reason we did is because we knew where to look. So we weren't searching at that point, we were just looking down the scope at this point. And we're able to get that ID much, 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 much further out than if actually farther out would be the correct term there, than we would have otherwise. So you can see it has a nice little kind of tactical advantage to it when you know where to look, so to speak. Now there's always, of course, the extreme version of this as well.
And then you get things like the SR-71 Blackbird. Now you're saying, why is this the extreme version? I mean, it's just, it's just a Blackbird. It's uh, nothing special. Well, one of the things I'm always tickled with this aircraft, and uh, this is always kind of fun, is if you scroll down a little bit, you'll notice that it has this ferociously long-range infrared reconnaissance frame camera on it. And it's a 15 slash 80, meaning we can see all the way out to 80 nautical miles with it if we know what we're looking for, which is um, absolutely absurd. So um, if we were to go ahead and take our scenario, let's go ahead and back ourselves up here. Oh, what is this? It's about 50 nautical miles. Notice we have no visual on those targets down there. We just we can't see them because we don't know where to actually point our aircraft. Now, if I were to get an E2, let's get a nice basic one here. That looks good to me. Press OK. Grab that. So let's go sit sensors, Mendo. Let's cue this chap as to uh, where we should be looking with our frame cameras here. It's going to take him a minute. Oh, did I push the wrong button? No, I'm good. I'm good. It just takes a moment for him to acquire. Just check. Yeah, I'm being legal here. There we go. So now watch this. So even though I'm 50 nautical miles away, uh, the SR-71 now knows where to look, and they're going to start taking little uh, pictures. Now, this unit was uh, previously one of the most ultimate, ultimate units. Oh, ah, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> That's 50 miles away. Uh, this was used to be the ultimate reconnaissance platform before they made that subtle little change. But you can see it's still fantastic as long as you have the ability to know roughly where the actual target is going to be so that you can use a different platform to give you that pinpoint position. So now, of course, my submarines and stuff like that cannot, you know, do the deeds that they do. So as you can see, it's a pretty straightforward. Uh, one thing you got to watch out for now, especially with the visual cameras, is the fact that they're going to be able to see things better if they know where to look. Otherwise, they're going to be searching, which is going to slow down their response time. Obviously, if you do a combination of uh, radar and image like we saw here, that worked well. The other thing we saw, of course, is that ID range versus that classification range. It's just a multiplier based on the zoom capable, but you're still going to have a maximum range limitation on it. Enjoy.